Good day. Keith McKinnon here again, 30-year <clears throat> collector of Masonic memorabilia, and today I brought a piece that both John Wilder and myself spoke about in another segment that hopefully will air soon. And that is a piece that basically crosses the threshold from being Masonic uh, to a whole different category and also touches on a manufacturer that is highly sought after as for, from collectors. Now, I'll tell you what the piece is first, then the manufacturer, and then the Masonic end of it. First of all, uh, the piece in its original state would be a galvanized uh, finish on it. And basically, it is a railroad Pullman car water dispenser. Now, when this piece was made, it would hold water. And you can use either the pour or the spigot at the end, and more than likely had two either glass or metal tumblers that would fit into the holders. This particular piece I have only seen four in existence, including this one. It would be placed on a certain shelf at the end of the railroad Pullman car, and probably for the lower class Pullman cars, not your first class. And it will be there for the passengers if they want to drink water to get up and either pour or use the spigot to get themselves a drink of water. That is the railroad side of this piece. It has a Masonic end to it and it also has the manufacturer, which I'm going to speak about now. The manufacturer of this piece, his items both in the ship field, uh, ship collecting field and the railroad memorabilia field is highly collectible. And that is Peter Gray or the Peter Gray and Sons Company. First established in 1873 in Boston, they later moved to Cambridge. Peter Gray made uh, tinware uh, in the 1873s. Anything to do with the railroad, anything to do with ships or other businesses that needed tinware, such as strong boxes, uh, he made conductor boxes, he made railroad lanterns, he made classification lamps, he made flare boxes. Um, there was a host of different items that he made. Ship lanterns, um, in the railroad lantern or ship lantern collector's field, uh, they are highly sought after by collectors just because of the manufacturer. Um, on the Masonic end of it, <clears throat> Peter Gray himself was a member of the craft. Uh, he joined Charity Lodge of Cambridge and was one of the first Sir Knights to be knighted in Cambridge Commandery number 42 of Cambridge, Massachusetts. His sons, um, George and Mason, also followed his father's footsteps in the business as well as uh, in Freemasonry. Um, Peter Gray died about 1906, right around there. His two sons continued the business, and as the automobile became the mode of transportation, uh, the company switched from basically the railroad ship uh, manufacturing into making uh, traffic signals. Uh, as I mentioned, Peter Gray was a member of the craft, so was his two sons. This piece here, we do have documentation that he donated this item to Cambridge Commandery number 42. Now, in Freemasonry, there are, I would say, very rare instances where an item is a one-of-a-kind piece. And I consider this to be a one-of-a-kind piece. Peter Gray had this piece uh, nickel-plated and then had engraved on a Cambridge Commandery KT on both sides. He had a piece, and we do not have documentation of how the piece was used or why he donated, or the, the use of why he donated it. But we can presume either one of two um, different ideas here. Number one, uh, if you are a Sir Knight, or you know something about a commander of Knights Templar, you know there are libations, libations that are uh, done within the degree world. Also, they have Christmas observations, uh, observances. And wine is usually used during those libations or uh, observances. 
This may have been used to carry the wine in and used to pour it into the pitcher, which then would be poured into the goblets. Again, we do not know for this for sure. Or it could have been used uh, in the large room, which was also called the asylum, when the Comanche met to hold water. So a certain night, if you wanted to drink water, you get it. But I believe that the item was used basically on what was called pilgrimages or outings. And basically from the 1880s until about 1920, even though Comanches still do it today, um, <clears throat> many Comanches visited another Comanche within the state or they would cross state lines and visit another Comanche. Uh, on those pilgrimages, it could be an overnight, it could be a weekend uh, tour for the Comanche. And they'd have dinners, they'd have a meeting, they might go away somewhere uh, and have some fun. Um, or outings. Commanderies were more social in the day than they are now. They really got the families involved in with the commandery itself and an entire commandery would then go on an outing for a weekend or a long weekend either to the seashore, amusement park, the mountains, the forests, um, a resort. And in many cases they would hire out an entire Pullman railroad car or railroad cars, depending on the amount of people that were going. Later, if it was a local event, they would hire out a number of street trolleys, and as cars and buses came into uh, use, uh, they would also hire out uh, one, two, maybe even three buses. But this piece here, more than likely, was still used for its original um, use, to hold water. And if the commandery was going on a outing or so, which Cambridge Commandery did, and there is verification that they did rent out Pullman cars, then more than likely this was used uh, for the Sir Knights and their ladies to get a drink of water. Um, what makes it a one-of-a-kind piece? Um, the piece itself is a very hard or rare piece to find. As I mentioned, I've only seen four, but there must be others in other collections and maybe in museums. Two, the manufacturer, Peter Gray. Also, three, Peter Gray himself, as we have documentation, donated this piece to Cambridge Commander. And four, it is Masonic or was used in Masonic purposes. Also, because of the name that is on it and it being nickel plated, it makes the piece a one of a kind item. Its value, um, if it was a railroad piece, it would be worth maybe about $500. Masonically, again, it could be that price. And because of the manufacturer, it could go up to, depending on the person that wanted to buy it for his collection, up to $1,000. So again, here's a piece that goes from one uh, category, Masonic, into the manufacturer, into a whole different category, railroad memorabilia.